Hi guys, good morning. I hope you are in good place and condition as of the moment. Um, keep safe. Well, I decided to make this video to support and supplement your study in structural engineering. I hope this will be a help to you. Um, the first topic will be sheer strength of concrete. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, shear strength of concrete. So letter A, the ultimate shear force. This is the formula. So class, this V is the shear force to be resisted by VC and VS. This VC is the concrete strength and this VS is the steel strength. This steel strength will be provided by stirrups, ties, and spirals. Or in general, they are the so-called shear reinforcements. Now, in the letter B provision, spacing of stirrups class, um, this is the formula that we should be familiar with. Um, after having the, the value of spacing from this expression, we need to compare it to that of Smax. Smax is the maximum spacing of shear reinforcements. So to know the corresponding S max value, uh, we will be checking, we will be comparing the value of Vs to that of 0.33 squared of F prime C BD. So here are the S max values class. Um, well, in these two conditions, we can say that this condition is the, is the not critical condition and this condition is the critical condition. Um, we can say that because of the fact that, um, take a look at this one. Um, I will call this VS as the shear force to be carried by shear reinforcement. Say the shear reinforcement is a stir up, uh, assuming that we are considering a beam. If this, if the shear force to be carried by stirrups is very large because of the fact that it exceeded already the 0.33 squared of F prime CBD, then therefore um, the stirrups uh, should be laid or should be arranged with a small value of spacing. Uh, because when, when the spacing is small, uh, these stirrups will will be able to provide a large value of shear strength. Then, class in this case, since Vs, since the shear force to be carried is very small because it is less than 0.33 squared of F prime CBD, then we can we can arrange the stirrups. Uh, we can lay them with with large value of spacing so here are the large values then uh, here are the small values so some of the some students are are being confused when dealing with with code provisions of nscp well the problem that i can see there is that uh, because the students uh, or because they keep on memorizing the provisions well let us change our strategy instead of memorizing let us just interpret them okay so for the letter b pro less sorry letter c provisions provision the minimum shear reinforcement area here are the formulas so later we will be discussing why this provision has existed Okay, for letter D, the shear reinforcement area, this is the formula. Um, AV is the notation for the shear reinforcement area. And this AV is being, being computed with this formula. Pi over 4, diameter of shear reinforcement squared. So this is just like computing area of circle. Well, the cross-section cross-sectional area of bars is circle then times this n so we should know what this n is okay for the letter c provision i have an example to you 
Say, for instance, we have a simply supported beam with this kind of load. And we know that the corresponding shear diagram is this one. Um, as we can see, uh, there are portions that are subjected to small values of shear forces. And actually, at the mid-span, the shear force is zero. Um, for the portions that are subjected to small values of shear force, we can technically say that we do not need to provide stirrups. But take note class, we are not allowed by the code to do to, to, to do that uh, to do that uh, kind of practice. Um, there is no reason or explanation. Uh, from the code but uh, I can provide an explanation to you um, for me the reason why we are not allowed to not not to provide stirrups is that the loads are not permanent uh, what I am trying to say is when this load changes well in reality the, the, the loads are changing the loads are not permanent so when this load changes this shear diagram changes as well so this mid span portion might might have a large shear force uh, in in the future so so because of that this the the provi the NSCP is not allowing us uh, not to provide stirrups or the NSCP baka magulo yung statement ko kanina the NSCP is always uh, requiring us to provide stirrups but for those sections that are subjected to small values of shear force what we are going to provide is minimum only Okay, now, for the for this n value, this n is the number of legs that is parallel to shear force. Um, take a look at this three stirrup detailing drawings. For instance, we have a vertical shear force acting. So, in this case, in this drawing, in this uh, stirrup detailing, the n is 2 because the number of legs parallel to the shear force is 2. For this case, the n is 3 because the legs that are parallel to shear forces are, are 3. Then for this, the n is 4. So this is very easy. Let's go, let's go to the calculation of Vc. Take note, uh, what we need is the Vs for us to, to have the spacing. And for us to have the Vs, we need Vu as well as Vs as well as Vc. So, for the calculation of VC, here is the provision. This is an excerpt uh, from NSCP 2015. The page number is this one. Uh, page number of NSCP 2015 PDF. Now, uh, so many students are also being confused. Are also confused with, with this one class. Uh... Many students do not know when to use this one, this one, this one, and this one. So, I will be giving a summary to you, class. Uh, this is the VC calculation. Um, first, as, as an examinee, you should decide uh, what are you going to, to use in the calculation of VC. Are you going to use the detailed calculation or the simplified calculation because we know that there are two calculations for VC then after deciding between these two by the way class um, in real life we are always using this detailed calculation but in board exam uh, we use these two calculations well uh, when 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 or in the problem when when it is not specified uh, we use the simplified calculation now after deciding uh, what what calculation will be used between these two we will now 
decide uh, whether the structural member is subjected to an actual force or not. So, when the structural member is not subjected to an actual force, this is the formula, but when the structural member is subjected to an actual force, this is the formula. Same with the detailed calculation class. There are formulas for uh, members without actual load and for members with actual load. So, these are the formulas from NSCP 2015. Um, if you want to see the formulas from the old code, uh, here are those. So, from NSCP 1992 as well as NSCP 2001, these are the formulas class. Take note that these formulas are no longer being used in the board exam. Since